this story happened a few years ago. I was in my early 20s and was studying in Paris, France. I was going home from uni. I usually took a short bus ride and walked the rest of the way. That day, I felt slightly uncomfortable. I could sense some guy looking intensely at me. I was used to unpleasant, unsolicited gazes, but this time, his gaze felt beastly. It's hard to explain why, but I felt like prey being stalked. I decided to get off the bus a few stops early. I wanted to avoid him and didn't want him to see where I usually got off, like I learned in the movies. I waited until someone else pressed the stop button and waited until the last moment to stand up and leave. I didn't notice him getting off the bus. Just as I was feeling the relief of having escaped an uncomfortable situation, I glanced over my shoulder and there he was, a few meters behind. I had the distressing feeling his eye had just looked away the moment I turned. I walked into a shop, took my phone and pretended to be taking a call. When I couldn't see him anymore, I exited and made my way home as fast as I could. I kept looking back into the busy street. I zigzagged, crossed the street at every crossing. Finally, I believed that him getting off at the same stop as me was just a coincidence. When I reached my building, I glanced back one more time. And there he was, his alarming gaze on me smirking. I ran up to my apartment, climbing the stairs four at a time. I reached the top floor, squeezed through my door, locked it, and froze. My intercom was ringing. Don't ask me why I picked it up, and I definitely regretted it the moment I did. I could hear the opposite flat intercom ringing as well. He had pressed all the buttons one by one, hoping someone would open. But now, he knew my name. Gabrielle! Oh shit. I felt like a deer in the headlights, frozen. Open the door, please, said a pleading voice. I just want to talk to you. Somehow I couldn't move or speak. Come to the window, he added. Look at me. You'll see I'm not a bad guy. Something clicked. He wanted to locate my apartment in the building, and I was not going to make that mistake. I hung up in shock. I waited by the door without moving for what seemed like hours. When I finally managed to calm myself down, I called my long distance boyfriend. Call the police, he immediately said. Why didn't I call the police? I, I don't know. Today, it definitely would have been the first thing I would have done. The fear of making a big deal out of something not important, perhaps. What an idiot I was. So I called my best friend instead. I just didn't want to feel alone. I told her all about it, and after a while, I felt better. Safe, and we started laughing. Suddenly, the intercom rang again. Two hours had passed since I'd come home, and I answered. Gabrielle, open, please. I still remember the chills I felt. He was still there. He was there this entire time. I was silent, petrified. He was silent, but I could sense his trepidation. Gabrielle, let me in. I'm so thirsty. Just give me a glass of water. This broke the tension, and I hung up. Curled up in a corner, literally in a recovery position, terrified, I waited. I was scared to make a sound. I knew he couldn't hear me from the hall, but I was scared to even breathe. The intercom rang again, and again. I didn't answer this time. I crouched to the sofa and fell asleep in exhaustion. I heard the intercom ring one more time in the middle of the night. I woke up in the morning, afraid to leave my apartment. I called my dad, who came to pick me up. There was no one in the hall, but there was a note in my mailbox that said, Gabrielle, I'm a nice guy. You should have opened to me. We immediately went to the nearest police station. The police listened and, of course, told me that I should not have hesitated to call them. My dad called the locksmith to install Digicode on the building door the same day and wrote a message to each of my neighbors, asking to not open the door to anyone they didn't expect. He sat in the cafe in the front of my building with two friends every evening for more than a week. Thankfully, I never saw that stalker again. After this episode, I used a different route to and from uni every day. I kept my phone tightly in my hand, looking back every few meters. Today, I am still very observant of my surroundings. I never answer the door if I'm not expecting someone. So to anyone reading this, if you ever find yourself in any kind of uncomfortable situation, 
Call the police. Don't be an idiot like me. And be safe, everyone. All right, so check this out. My friend just bought a new house, so he decided to have a housewarming. I had a great time, and at just after midnight, I decided it was time to go. I tried all the taxi services in our area, and I either got no answer or told I would have to wait at least an hour. I live in Wales, UK, and we don't have Uber. I'm a student and work weekends, so I had to get home soon as I had work in the morning, so I decided that I would just walk home. My phone says 41 minutes and I was in a drunken state, so I make my goodbyes and refuse any offer of company or calling another friend and I set off. I was lit, but not too drunk. Easily followed the directions on my phone and got about 30 minutes in when I came across an alley that I had to take. I sped up as I walked through as it was very dark, but got through and I felt silly for being a little bit spooked. As I carried on walking, I reached a long pathway and noticed a figure in the distance. I couldn't tell if they were walking toward me or just standing still, but as soon as I got closer, I could see them just standing and smoking a cigarette. I kept to the other side of the path and I walked past. As I carried on walking, I felt a little uneasy and looked back and the guy was now walking behind me. I quickened up and hoped to gain distance, but this was a straight path and he kept pace. I knew I was getting close to an area that I was familiar with from walking my dog and I knew I would be in a well-lit residential area soon. Finally, I reached a crossroads and prayed he would go the other way, but he turned the same way as me. This continued all the way until I was just two streets away from the one that I live on. I decided I had to lose him, so the next corner I took, I ran as fast as I could. I'm a fit guy, so I managed to get to the next street pretty quickly and up the last alley into the street I live on before looking back and he was out of sight. So I quickly ran to my house and I got inside. My parents were in bed thankfully so the lights were out and I took a deep breath and began to calm down as my dog ran to greet me. I gave her a pat and went into the living room, but I kept the lights off as I planned to head straight to my bedroom after grabbing a drink. I walked from into the hall and into the kitchen as my dog Faith followed, but as soon as I took a drink from the refrigerator, she turned from me and looked at the front door and slanted her head before slowly walking towards it. I swear I got the creepiest feeling like my whole body froze as I saw a figure through the small frosted glass panel in the door. I slammed the door to the refrigerator and hid out of view. I was terrified. Faith began barking and jumping at the door. I stayed hidden out of view as she shuffled around, pawing at the door. Suddenly, my dog charged into the kitchen, still barking. She ran past me to the kitchen door and leapt up. I ran into the hall and saw my dad at the top of the stairs. He asked what Faith was barking for and I blurted out a guy followed me home. He charged downstairs and Faith was still going crazy in the kitchen. My dad marched into the darkness as I followed but again Faith ran past us back to the front door. My dad went into the garden as I held Faith back and he saw the front gate rattle. We went to it and looked up and down the street, but didn't see anything. He decided to stay up, and I went to bed. The next morning, in the back garden, we found a rusty knife. It's dirty and has black tape all around the handle. There are also two stab marks on the back door. My dad refused to report it to the police, which I think is insane. Somebody clearly tried to break in, but he insists that they won't come back. If anyone is interested, I took a few pictures of the knife that I will post pictures of. The whole situation has played on in my mind all week. It's really creeped me out, and I can safely say I'll call someone for a lift home next time.
My first job was at McDonald's. This building was attached to a gas station and located off of a busy highway. I was 14, all kinds of bad luck at this age, and started a 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. work shift. This early, the store was usually empty, so only three people, myself included, were ever in the restaurant. The manager, who was in the back, the cook, who was also in the back, and I, the cashier, who was usually up front. I was wiping down the counter when a man who looked to be in his mid-30s or early 40s came in. He didn't order anything, but went straight to the restrooms, which were in the restaurant area just around the corner from my cash. Many truckers and travelers would come in to simply use the washrooms and leave, so this wasn't an uncommon occurrence. I didn't think much of it. But after the man finished, he came up to the counter and said, Excuse me, I was just in the washroom and one of the toilets is overflowing. I immediately came around the corner and let him lead me towards the restroom. Suddenly, I got a horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach and I stopped dead in my tracks. I became very aware that no one was in the restaurant area and the only other two people in the store were in the back and would not be able to hear me if I went into the restroom. The man had the restroom door open and realized that I had paused. He nonchalantly said, come on in. I'll show you, which came off innocently enough, but it didn't sit well with me. I smiled and said, one moment, I'll get my manager, and I started making my way back to the counter. It'll only take a minute, he called out. I met my manager in the back and explained to him that a man was complaining about an overflowing toilet. My manager went to check it out and I followed closely behind him. When we turned the corner, the man was gone and we entered the restroom. No toilet was overflowing. We exchanged a look and we never brought it up again. To this day, I feel like some divine intervention gave me the wisdom to know not to follow the man into the restroom. The whole situation only lasted just a few seconds, but it felt like forever. I was young and trusting and this man could have done God knows what and I wouldn't have been heard. He could have left got away with whatever it was he had planned, and hit the highway. I never did see him again. This happened to me a long time ago, but I think about it from time to time, and I've used a story to teach my kids to never open the door for people that you don't know. I was a kid. And we lived in a really big old house that was part of an old farm. It was on a semi-busy road, but was rural. The house was really big and had a large formal living room with a large formal dining room right behind it. There was a big double front door that opened to a covered porch and a side door that went into the dining room. My mom was doing laundry in the very back of the house and I was watching TV in the living room. There was a knock at the side door. I wasn't supposed to open the door but I figured I could peek and see. I looked through the curtain on the side door and I could not believe my eyes. It was the Easter Bunny. Of course, looking back now, I know it was a guy in a costume, but back then, I thought it was real. When he saw me, he did a little hop and asked me to let him in. I was kind of in shock and just stared at him. He was in a pink suit and had a basket with eggs in it on his arm. He knocked again and acted really impatient and then said, little girl, are you gonna let me in so I can hide these eggs for you? I wanted those eggs, but he was a stranger, right? But again, he was the Easter Bunny. Can the Easter Bunny be a stranger? So I asked him who he was. He sighed and said, I'm the Easter Bunny, and you have to let me in right now so I can hide my eggs. Invite me in, or you won't get any. I reached out to unlock the door. But then I got a sick feeling in my stomach and decided I should probably check with my mom first. So I told him I was going to go ask my mom. He said, no, you have to let me in. I'm here to see you. These are for you. I thought about it and he started to freak me out. So I yelled for my mom and ran to tell her. 
I run back to the laundry room and tell my mom there's an Easter bunny at the front door and he wants to come inside the house. My mom laughs and says, well, let me go see. So she walks to the front door and of course the bunny is gone, like no trace of him. So my mom thinks I'm a big fat fibber and maybe sit on the couch and think about being a liar. Hours later, my dad comes home from work and he tells my mom there was a robbery a couple of miles away. A little boy had opened the door and a man had tied him and his mom up and then robbed them. I found out later that the guy had beat up the mom pretty badly. There was no mention of a bunny suit, but what better way to get a kid to let you inside? That was strike one for that house. So I, a 24 male, have lived on my own for about two years now. I have a very small bungalow I'm able to pretty comfortably afford. Inside this bungalow, I have an attic area. At a guess, I'd say it's about 5 by 5 meters in size. And you can really only stand in there in the very center. Anyways, I work night shift at a factory, where I basically just sit on my phone all night. So I usually get in around 8 a.m. I was coming home last Thursday during a heavy storm and got into the house and just went to sleep. When I woke up, I got on my phone and saw that I was so tired last night that I didn't check any of my notifications. I have a ring camera outside my door which shows me anyone who would have come into my room. I saw that it had been tripped around 7.42 a.m. and I had gotten to the house around 8.10 to 8.15 a.m. I checked the video and saw that it was a man. He was pressed right up to the door and was fumbling around with the handle. He did this for about 10 seconds until he spotted the camera. Once he did, he quickly scuttled away. This unsettled me, but didn't entirely creep me out or anything. I got up to go make some food and discovered something in my kitchen. My back window was opened. I, of course, instantly began having the thoughts of a home intruder, but slowly chilled myself out as I convinced myself I had left it open. The rest of the day consisted of this, just noticing small things that didn't seem right and scaring myself. All up until a point, I leave for my shift at 10 p.m. and was watching through TV around 9 o'clock-ish. I spotted something that made my heart leap out of my throat. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see it. My attic entrance was slowly being slid open. I can so vividly remember that I began questioning my sanity. Surely I was just hallucinating or something. I looked over at it and absolutely saw something that made me so much more scared. I saw fingers wrap around the hatch and begin moving it more. I didn't know what to do. I could feel the panic beginning to really get to me and I wasn't sure if I should leave the house and call the police or if I should try and yell at whoever was up there. I chose a mixture of both. I began dialing 999 and ran to my bedroom where I could lock the door. As soon as I began running, I heard the hatch almost tear off with the speed they moved it. And I arrived at my bedroom door. I looked down the corridor, watched for a second, seeing only a little slice of the blackness up in my attic. And I saw human hands still holding onto the sides of my ceiling, and I yelled, Whoever is there, I'm calling the police, and I have a gun. If you take a step out, I will fucking shoot you. The adrenaline was really making my hands and voice shake, but I tried sounding as tough as I could. Then I saw something I truly do not think I will ever forget. The hand slipped back into the dark, and he dropped down. I slammed my door shut and locked it as quickly as I could. The call went through, and I was able to get on a line with the police, and they dispatched officers to my house. I then told them I didn't know if the man was armed or not, and the dispatcher told me to stay on the line. I heard the man walking up to my door, rattling the door handle. He also seemingly went through my cupboards in my kitchen as I heard a lot of commotion in there. Truth be told, I don't know why he stayed. I would have just left the house, but he stayed right up until the police came in and arrested him. Apparently he was a homeless man and was armed with a knife from my kitchen and had recently been seen in that area trying to get into other houses. Truth be told, I'm very frightened to sleep still. I now sleep with my bedroom door locked and all my windows closed. I also sleep with a knife under my pillow. I know this is unlikely to ever happen again, but I just cannot forget the way he dropped down from my attic. So that's the story of the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. 
I made this account to tell it. Because I feel like if I write it down like this, it will feel less like a real thing and more like just a story. Hey everyone, thanks for listening if you stuck around at this point. If you haven't yet, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and that notification bell to be notified when future episodes come out. You can stalk me on Twitter, you can stalk me on Facebook, and you can also stalk me on Instagram. If you have a true scary story of your own, feel free to send it to my email or post it to my subreddit. All these links are below. Huge shout out to Derek Weber Scary Stories for coming on. I reached out to him and dude's really in town. Uh, oh my God. Dude is really insanely talented and underrated. So I just figured I'd show some love. I like, I don't know, the horror community, the horror narration community is just, it's, it's fucking badass. Everybody in it is super nice and super welcoming and I love being a part of it. And I'm very fortunate to uh, be surrounded by such really, really awesome people. Um, so go check out his channel if you haven't yet. I know I've been up and down, back and forth, left and right, black and white, you know, with what I want to do with this channel. I figure I'm still growing and figuring myself out. So I appreciate anybody who's being patient with me and like, dude, what are you fucking doing? Like, are you narrating? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And it's, it's tough because I see so much going on, like with other channels that I really like, like let's read Mr. Nightmare you know, um, nukes top five. Like I watch all these channels and I, and there's like bits and pieces of me that want to do all of it. And I realize, and I need to come to terms with the fact that if I'm going to do separate things, I need to start separate channels. Obviously I'm going to continue narrating true, scary stories. But like I said, in my little community post, it's going to be like Mr. Nightmare and chilling scares from basically from now on still going to narrate true, scary stories. I'm still going to narrate theme stories every once in a while. There might be some disturbing images or disturbing videos type of thing. Hopefully there's some people, I know there'll be some people that are into that and some people that are not. It's just, you know, it's just the way it goes. So I appreciate y'all being patient with me and understanding and just coming along for the ride regardless. And I'll keep uh, plugging away. And uh, I think that's, that's all I got. See you in the next one. Cheers.